Here, here, here I'll forward it to you. Welcome everybody. Uh, I'm glad that you joined us for the first edition of the new Dr. House Calls. And before anything, uh, if you didn't catch that video of the amazing Sandeep Das, which is our um, very virtuosic composer, tablet player, and um, educator, we're going to play it back at the end of the streaming. So stay tuned again. And before further ado, I'm going to invite the other two co-founders, Sami Merdinian and Yves Daram Raj, to join me right here hey so much hey Eve. and hey how's it going hello. guys Good. uh we're all so you know icc we're not in the same place but we're happy to be together um, we're in different all rooms of you. <laughs> different rooms different places so before anything i want to uh thank you all for joining and we're really excited about our first guest in the new doctor house call tonight um we had the pleasure of each one working with him and uh, meeting him at different occasions. And last year at the seventh New Doctor International Music Festival, we had the honor of having him with us, join us in Argentina. And um, I want to, before I introduce you, I want to read a little bit about uh, his bio and just so for you to know, if you don't know him, you need to know him. So, and it's strange that you didn't get to see him yet. So. I want to introduce Sandeep Das, who is a 2020 Guggenheim Fellow and Grammy winner, winning musician. Sandeep Das is one of the leading Taba players uh, in the world today, with a prolific international reputation spanning over three decades. He regularly collaborates with top musicians and ensembles, ranging from renowned Indian maestros to Yo Yo Ma, Paquito de Rivera, and the New York Philharmonic, uh, just to name a few. There are many, many more on the list. Das is frequently invited for residences in major universities, and his original compositions have toured globally and appear in several film productions. He's also a founder of the Indian organization Harmony and University Through Music, HUM, which presents unique world music concerts and supports the musical studies of seven specially abled children. So as you see, we have a lot in common with our mission 
um, and we have a lot to learn from from a musician like Sandeep Das. So it's our great honor to welcome Sandeep Das. Hi everyone. Yay. 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 <laughs> Go! <laughs> In the first minute. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. We are so happy to have you here. Really, it's a it's a pleasure to have a friend, a guru, a maestro. So thanks for joining us. Love you guys. Love you all, and it's my pleasure entirely. How have you all been? We've been great. Great. I mean, you know, just a little pandemic going around, other unrest. Could couldn't be better. <laughs> you know, as long as we are all healthy, I think that's the biggest prayer that we all have to have for ourselves and everyone we know, that we are all healthy, we remain healthy, and I think everything else is good. For that's sure. it. For sure. Um, we, I, I, you're in you're Boston, in Boston or, or you're where right now? Yes, uh, I'm in Boston uh, with my family and uh, just praying that all of us remain safe, healthy, and we, we will see where this uh, new lifestyle takes us to indeed we have uh eve is in florida Sam in my florida. summer palace <laughs> i'll have you guys down sometime I mean, that's it so he's doing well in the pandemic it seems right so <laughs> he'll he'll be the one who sponsors our next tour so we are all set <laughs> of course <laughs> so um now that we're here the three of us have heard this story, and I think we, the, when we were thinking about the interview, we said, we all agreed on one question, mm -hmm. which is, please tell us about how you came about the tabla. We think the story with your dad, um, it's fascinating, and we can all learn from it too. Um, and uh, so, please take it away. Well, I, I must say I, ha I was very lucky. I had a very, very smart and visionary father. Um, actually, uh, today is his death anniversary. You know, he, oh. I, I definitely miss him. But uh, it all started with uh, a complaint from school. He got a complaint that uh, I've been disturbing my class by tapping the feet. And when I'm asked to stop tapping my feet, I start tapping the desk. So in back in those days, and especially in India, you know, the, the father principal or the school head uh, called my father and said that I should be taken to a doctor. Thankfully, you know, I was, I was worried that once I get home, he, you know, doctors means injections and whatnot. But thankfully, when I got back home, instead of being mad at me or angry at me, I saw something on the coffee table and i looked at it and i asked my dad i said dad what are those and he said that's a tabla and your lessons start tonight so instead of taking me to a doctor he got me my first pair of tabla i was seven years old and my lessons that very night and that's that's you know i learned i kept learning for almost 12 years that's a separate story and, and yeah that's how uh, there's a saying in India, the instrument chooses you. Uh, so the instrument chose me when I was seven, and I, I'm still in love with it. I see it's very aggressive medical, medical treatment. treatment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my, I think my father realized that it's more a mental treatment than an injection. So, yeah, he got me a musical medical treatment. Look at that. So, so the, uh, your father recognizing um, your tap from the early beginning and making a problem uh basically something that, that carried off for your whole life yeah so it's pretty amazing fortunate and, uh, very fortunate yeah yeah fortunately really and so basically once something for us that is a little different is that we heard that you went and you live with your guru so uh, you know it's something very unique i feel that's worth sharing with the world that India also, you know, has schools of music, colleges of music and universities of music, but every single classical in Indian classical musician so far have all come from this one on one learning where you go and actually live with your guru. Uh, so the same happened with me, you know, my father decided to take me to one of the legends of tabla playing. 
who took a few hours of test. He tested me in various ways and then he said that this kid has tabla in his blood and I will teach him but leave him here. So it was a tough decision because you know my, I don't come from a family of musicians. So again when you talk about India there are musicians who are most musicians who are playing are seven generations, eight generations of playing that one instrument. So then it's very natural that you live with your guru but for someone who's from a regular middle class family it was a tough decision but thankfully my father understood the value of learning that way. So I did spend 12 years. So my first guru that I, my, you know, lesson started that evening was in my hometown. His name is uh, Sri Shiv Kumar Singh Ji, who's still alive. And, and fortunately, he keeps sending me amazing compositions on WhatsApp even today. So I'm still, yeah, I'm, I'm so honored and grateful that I'm still learning from him. So I learned from him for, uh, I think, a couple of years or a year and a half. Then my father took me to the other guru, the, you know, the legendary Pandit Kishan Maharaj Ji, who represents the Banaras style of tabla playing. And I spent 12 years living in his house, uh, learning by doing chores. So there was no money exchanged. You live as a son would live or as a daughter would, would live in the in, in, in a family and do chores. So, you know, working in the garden, cleaning cars, uh, uh, getting groceries and in return, you know, uh, learning. And in these strange times, I think all those skills might come in handy. So if you need your cars cleaned, glance mode, you know where to come. So I'm all set. Now quarantine is, you know, like <laughs> I'm not kidding. For yes. It's so hard right now. What we're going to do, we're not going to be able to be on a stage. So maybe. You can yes. Do... Yes. I, I, I've been telling my daughters that, you know, dad is really good at in gardening, cleaning cars. I can clean spotless, you know, so I can, I'm good at that. So I have some skill sets. So you're How did we not know this when you came to our festival? Because, you know, uh, <laughs> we were so engrossed in the soccer craziness and the food and the love that I was getting from all of you and your families that we didn't get to talk about our secondary skills. But now it's, <laughs> it's, it's coming out now. We, we should have taken advantage of it. <laughs> <laughs> next time. There's always a next time, Eve. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure you guys have questions i know that eve was curious about the different genres and the changing from yeah. one thing i mean i think it's absolutely fascinating first of all when i listen to you i'm in just in awe of your music making there's such a freshness i i feel like you're one of the musicians i know that is most in the moment anything can happen in real time you're really communicating and I, I, I just, just want to know, know how do you apply, you apply that, that when you're playing, playing with musicians of different genres, genre, when you're playing with Yo-Yo Ma, Yo -Yo Ma, when you're playing, when you're playing with, with uh, Wu Ma, when you're playing with all these Silk Road musicians who come from different, different cultures, cultures, that adaptability and yet bringing your tradition, your ideas, uh, your music to the forefront. So, you know, I, I will answer it in different parts. The first part I would say is that a huge credit goes to my guru. Though he was, you know, from an old system, very strict, zero mercy, uh, but unlike maestros of his generation. So when I'm talking about my guru, that's the generation of the famous sitar maestro Ravi Shankar you know, who was the guru of the Beatles. So Ravi Shankar, my guruji basically grew up together in the same city. They played their first concerts together. So that level of big, you know, legendary names, fan following. He was very strict, yet at the same time, the way he taught me music uh, was not something external. The way I was taught that th the tabla is an extension of me. It's basically an extra probably set of fingers that plays something. So it's when I'm playing the tabla, I'm actually not playing something external to my body. Uh, again, we can go very deep into that. How, how is that even possible? But that, the kind of the way he taught us was that, that everything was internalized. So music has to grow inside you to, for you to feel that way. Yet, he was someone, I'll give you an example, that I played a concert and he said, 
Excellent. You sounded exactly like me today. So, you know, to a student's ears, that's probably the biggest Grammy or that's probably the biggest mm -hmm. certificate that your guru, who's never appreciated you, says you sounded exactly like me. So, you should be like, yay, I'm all set. <laughs> yet, he, yet, he was not smiling. You know, he, he, he kept saying that and he clapped and yet he was like, you sounded like me. You were exact, you know, you were just like me today. Yet, you know what happens to... Xeroxes and he was constantly pointing at something in the corner of his room and you know I, I, I it took me some time as a 14 15 year old kid it's like should I celebrate should I not celebrate what is he pointing at and by the time I realized he was pointing at a trash bin and then he looked at me and he said Xeroxes that's where you will end up my son so you know at uh, so in one hand, he's asking us to follow him blindly, yet he said that and he said, it's great, the first note you play, people should know whose student you are, but where was Sandeep? I didn't see any Sandeep. So unless there is a flavor of Sandeep, that's where you're going to end my son. So an amazing person that, that was giving us the strictest, strictest knowledge, strictest traditional way of teaching, yet he was asking us to think for ourselves. He was telling us to go out once I decided to not practice instead. Oh, sorry, not go to listen to a concert. There was a concert in town and I thought, you know, yeah, so and so. He is not that a good an artist. I might as well go and just uh, practice. He got back home early and he asked me, he said, uh, what happened? Isn't there a concert tonight? And out of my mouth, the, you know, the truth came out. I said, yeah, but Guruji, he's not that good. That was bad news. Uh -oh. he, said, he said, oh, so you think you have become this good that you can decide who's good and who's not bad? <laughs> Until and unless you go and see what's happening in the world, how will you know how bad you yourself are? So from tonight, I don't care who's playing in town. If I see you in my house, that will be your last night in the house. So, you know, his, his, uh, his way of telling us to go out, listen to the world, his way of making us think, where is the Sandeep? Also, another example before I will move to the second section is, you know, they had contemporary tabla players who they were known as rivals. That, you know, so-and-so, these they were the three top tabla players and, in a way, professional rivals. Yet, I remember one night he said, he did this to me, he snapped his fingers, he took me to his living room, played me an album from a movie track, and he said, this is the best nadhindhinna. It's a phrase that you play super fast. He said, this is the best nadhindhinna you will ever hear, my son. Hear this, put it in your heart and go practice. It was not his Nadindhinna, it was the Nadindhinna of his rival tabla player. So that honesty, that okay, I might be your guru, but I am not the best in every aspect. There are other tabla. So, you know, like he gave us openness. He made us, uh, he opened our lives beautifully in a way that you can be traditional, yet you can go out and be conventional and you can collaborate. So, you know, I when I started traveling out, my debut concert was with someone like Ravi Shankar. He didn't tell me that I'm going to play with Ravi Shankar till 30 minutes before the show. So, you know, that kind of exposure b helped me when I started traveling out. I first came to New York in 1990. I played an Indian classical concert. Then I went to Trinidad. I had never <laughs> heard. <laughs> Are you from there? My, my, my father's father from Trinidad. Trinidad. Oh, I didn't realize that, man. So my, we so I went, to, I went to Trinidad and I heard steel drums for the first time. They were playing in the hotel lobby and I just pulled my tablas out and I started playing with them. So that kind of background, then I would say, thankfully, exposure to the right kind of people. So I have been very lucky, you know. Like from the fact that I know the three of you, I'm very lucky. The fact that I met Yoyoma, I was very lucky. So, you know, my musical career at every stage, I met the right kind of people that opened my world in a very beautiful way that helped me realize that there is no, no you know, the, 
there is many many ways of playing music mine can be very personal and very i might love it the most but that doesn't mean that's the only way so you know that kind of thought process then when i'm collaborating the second part to your question when i'm playing with you eve or sami or hearing solan sing i'm not only seeing the person that's doing that i'm seeing years of practice i'm seeing years of sacrifice i am seeing thought you know i generally I, you know as as you would agree you can see a thoughtless musician and you can see or hear a thoughtful musician so for the moment i see the sacrifice there is respect and once i have respect for whoever i am playing with collaboration is very easy you know then i'm not trying to show anything to you i'm actually learning from you and at the same time you are learning so that thought process uh is important and the third phase is my prayer you know my prayers it's something very personal probably i have never shared it with anyone ever is not to be the best tabla player you know my grave shouldn't say here lies the greatest tabla player it should say here lies a good guy here lies a great guy and whenever i'm on stage my prayer is that by my playing tonight i hope my father my guru and the people who like you know love me they are not disgraced so you know like that's all i care for that as long as i play enough that my guru wherever he is feels is like okay he didn't disgrace me my father is like not ashamed of me and friends like you all of you you know like if if ever if there's a concert and eve goes leaves or sami or solan says like yeah <laughs> that is the day i fear so you know that prayer keeps uh, you know my mind probably level headed and yeah I, i i love playing because i love learning and i have learned from each one of you and everyone so and at the end you know it's about having fun i love doing anything that's involves fun so as long as i'm having fun i play with that musician otherwise i have turned down concerts with a lot of money with the some of the biggest names because i i have not had fun i have not learned something i'm not learning something i'm not having fun i have said thank you and refused money even when i was struggling i'm still struggling but even i when i was struggling even more so yeah i have to have at the end of the uh, uh, night i don't care who i'm playing with i have to have fun if i'm not having fun you won't see me ever again on stage with you so, so now we know so i hope if that answer it never, was a <laughs> Let's keep it fun, guys. <laughs> no, I love you guys. I'm sorry, it was a long answer, but it was a very deep question. No, so, that was great. Yeah. yeah, I think you should record some of those as quotes and set them as alarm. You know, I wake up to quotes by Sunday. <laughs> It'd be very, you know. empowering motivating you know oh, people yeah. i i i hope I mean, because it. no i i feel the way i learned i and uh, the way i was groomed is very unique and so i 100% give credit to my guru you know for uh pushing us in that direction and people have you know when i have taught lessons or uh, given talks at nice conferences people do say that i should write a book uh i don't know when bye bye <laughs> no, <I'm not> <laughs> but 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 hopefully you know someone will maybe it will be something that i just record and somebody else writes it down but it, there are there is experiences and stuff that should be shared with people yes so i'm curious is that is that normal of a musician in general to go and study with their or or an artist in general is that a normal thing in india or is that it still is you know unfortunately it's disappearing very fast but it still is anyone who is serious about any particular kind of music they you know nowadays well my guru ji had a huge house so but if you are living in a new york apartment you know or like for me example i live in a boston condo i have students but i can't have them stay in my house but we definitely try to spend as much time so you know like in india what happens is you go you go in the morning you come back at night so you don't stay stay there but then you are there the whole day even if your guru is traveling even if he she is on tour you still go to her house you still go to his house and practice there because just being in that environment 
that this is your guru's house just puts you in a different zone so it's it's still continuing and yeah people are still learning that way that's amazing that really is yeah, yeah a, que a question, a question that, that came instantly, instantly to my mind when, when we collaborated was, was that, that um you didn't, you didn't want, want any music, music. you didn't <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah. no just, just play it for me once <laughs> and then like it magically <laughs> It all fit together. <laughs> and that's, that's something, something so strange, strange for, for classical, classical musicians. musicians. And I know the, the folk, folk element and like past on, on generation, generation by generation, generation. a lot well, of the like teaching like happens, happens that way, way outside, outside of classical, of classical music. music. So, so just, yeah. yeah. Tell us <laughs> more about like <laughs> what, what goes, goes on, on up you there. Know, I, I feel, uh, I was, I have asked this question to my, uh, you know, Western classical musician friends. And I was actually told by some that that's how even uh, Western classical music was. This whole concept of writing is much later. If you guys might correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've heard that it, this was not the way, you know, it was only a means of sharing information. But now probably the page, the paper has taken precedence over, over trying to memorize things. And also at the same time, when I'm playing with people like Yo-Yo, I don't think he's reading or you, you guys, you know, I, I, like I've seen Yo-Yo's uh, scores are, he asks his office to make it so small so that he doesn't have to flip pages. So mm -hmm. first of all, they are very tiny. And then throughout his concert, the more he gets into the mood, the more I see him pushing the stand away with his feet. And so I think for me, it's the way we were trained. Everything is taught orally, you know. Uh, let me give you an example. Why don't you guys repeat, you know. Dha, dha, din, din. Say it. Da, 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 din, din. din. Yes. Dha, da, din, din, na, na, te, 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 te. Da, 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 din, din, na, 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 te, 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 te. We so, that, so yeah, because of the lag, but the point is, you already know a phrase, and if I make you repeat it five times, it's like you know you're the child. Uh, you learn nursery rhymes as a kid, even before you learn how to read it. You know, Jack and Jill, Twinkle, Twinkle, just by your mother or your father repeating it to you, and probably those are the rhymes that you still remember, whereas stuff that you read later you have forgotten. Same thing, you know, everything I learned for 12, for 13 years was taught to me orally first. We were not allowed to write things down. Thanks to that, every formal lesson that I had is lives with me, breathes with me, sleeps with me, eats with me. Anything that I wrote down first from a fellow student saying, hey, hey, Solange, what did Guruji teach you yesterday? And Solange loves me. So Solange says, okay, I'll teach you that. And she teaches me something. I write it down. I have forgotten half of them. So in a way, our ears are trained that way that anything I hear, I'm able to make a sketch. So I hear it once, I'm able to make a sketch. Second time if I hear it, or within the first time, I'm able to put the eyes, the nose or the lips. Third time, I color it with my hands. The good thing is that I can fake it enough with experience that you think I'm playing it very well. But if you ask me to repeat it, or if you ask me note by note, I can't do it. Right. So good or bad, even my own pieces, my last piece, King Ashoka, is completely written down. Uh, whereas the other pieces, even if I'm playing it every night, it will be different because I'm not reading every note. I'm trying to color it differently. So both good and bad, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's part training part openness and sometimes I take help you know like for my tabla concertos the entire orchestra is reading a piece that I'm supposed to play as a soloist I'd have gone to friends and said hey, hey can, Sami can you help me with this phrase and I've then cheat you know I make my own notations uh, some you know faces squig smiley faces <laughs> sad faces <laughs> angry you know That's a deep score. actually yo-yo has made photocopies of some of my scores I don't know what he's going to do it probably put it on eBay for two dollars later but he has always he's found found my scores very funny and he's taken you know made made copies of those so yeah it's part training and part help from friends and uh, I fake well, let me be honest. Or you improvise really well. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> 
<laughs> also, well, you know, I, I would like to be able to fake like, like you. You know, I also feel uh, probably, you know, when you are not just focusing on your on your score, you are hearing the piece as a whole. Yeah. I sometimes hear and see things very differently from how people like you who are classically trained see things because I exactly know why the uh, why the uh, composer has a timpani coming in there because that ping ping is relates to the harp or the harp that particular chord is actually playing off of the bass line you know because I'm not hearing just my score or I'm not focusing so somehow I'm looking at the bigger picture and putting in my small things in there to fit and f I think for you guys it's the other way around that each one of you do your parts so beautifully that the puzzle then comes together and becomes a big big picture if that makes sense. Well I guess like, I guess, like the, the one thing, thing that, that is, is in common is they always, they always say, say if you have your music memorized then you can actually pay attention to other things right and that's, that's why, why we try as classical musicians to get to a level where we're also, also trying, trying to memorize what we do so we can pay attention to other things musically. Um, we do it in the process as well, but that, you know. When but you can, I, can, title, can I tell you something funny? I understand exactly what you guys go through because the few pieces that are actually written and I have to play, like my, the Tabla Concerto, one of my favorite written by Dinok Vijayaratne, who's I think from a fellow Juilliard uh, musician, amazing composer. I have played that piece so many times that I know that piece start to finish. But since I started by reading, reading it, mm -hmm. I have never had the courage to do away with the piece of paper. Every time I'm like, hey, Sandeep, you know this piece, do away with it. But then I'm scared. What if I forget this? So I still have the score and I still flip through it. So I totally understand you know what you guys go through even if you know this piece that you have been playing since you were six years old it's just just habit then probably becomes habit to have that as a safety measure so yeah i have tremendous respect for that yeah, it's very interesting so um now changing a little bit from the musical aspect um i'm very curious about when you moved here and how was the adjustment and the differences between living in India and here and um, the challenges also you have two young daughters um, you know and we are all from different countries or backgrounds you know Sami and I we moved here when we were young Eve his parents are both from two different places and um, being immigrants it's you know it's it's fine adjustment culturally for all of us so so, you know, I, my first ever flight or travel outside of India was to New York, 1990. So I have been coming to the US since then and very, very frequently, but I never lived here as, as you right, you know, pointed out. So I would come play, go, go back. But in the process, I did make a huge circle of friends. You know, both Indian, Indian classical concerts, jazz concerts, you know, I played with all sorts of musicians, then Silk Road happened. So for me personally, it wasn't such a big change because I already had friends. I would say it was a bigger, much bigger challenge for my wife and daughters who were not little, you know, as such. My, my oldest daughter was mid ninth grade. My younger one was still younger. Uh, so the, I would say the biggest challenge was for my wife that we uprooted a completely successful, happy family career life and moved here literally overnight you know i applied for a green card got it in six months and we moved here you know and so i would say the challenge was bigger for them than me i i start you know i on the fifth day of moving here i left for a concert tour to beijing it was the second hour i think the worst oh, yeah it was the worst i think or the second worst snowstorm ever in the east coast that my wife faced alone with two girls in the US. So she says that, you know, I took her on a cruise, <laughs> left her in the mid mid ocean and said, bye bye, you know, and I took off. So poor woman, she faced that she had never seen snow. She had never seen trees without leaves. So she thought if Boston is such a, you know, she told this to me a year and a half later, it almost broke my heart that she was so depressed when we landed in Boston and, all, you know, every tree 
was shorn of any leaves, nothing. She was like, wow, how sad is this <laughs> city that it only has dead trees. Look at that. So the kids went off to school. They made friends. But it was she, she, she was working there. She's suddenly in a condo with a snowstorm. So I still feel very guilty about it. But that's when I would say friends, uh, people that I should mention, you know, Yo-Yo, uh, he got the entire apartment furnished. So I was renting an apartment. I made a list. Oh, we will need towels. We will need this. We would need that. But that's when friends, you know what friends are, that we walked into a completely furnished apartment. We even had Indian spices in oh, drawers, glo gloves, hats, so much so I'm not kidding Eve, Sami, that we literally didn't have to go buy any supplies for almost a year. Wow. So, you know, Yo-Yo's wife is taking my wife and our daughters to get flu shots, Health, in, you know, how do we get health insurance? Laura Freed, she was the Silk Road ex executive director. She, she's taking our family to, you know, where are the Indian stores? Another friend, Catherine Givers, you know, John. I, I like, there's so many people. I, 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 it would take me an, an hour to list that they had sh divided amongst themselves who is going to help the Das family with what, and. One friend of Yoyo's, she left a set of car keys of a Subaru, which was only driven 500 miles. So, so I cannot even express how grateful I am for that, that they, we had people come in as if they were family for us and helped Tripti and my girls settle. Uh, yet, I would say it's been six years now, six or seven years now. I would still say we are still settling in because now that I live here, coming here and playing was a different ball game. Now that I live here, I realize the society is different. You know, I, it took me some time to realize that in India, if I, if Solange comes and plays in India, it doesn't matter how busy I am, I will leave everything for Eve or Sami or Solange or anyone that I have known in the US and oh, they are in Delhi. They are my responsibility. It took me some time to realize that, you know, it's not so here. You know, someone, just because I played with someone, doesn't mean that when I go to New York, it's still friends with me. You know, you understand, you guys yeah. you understand what I'm saying. So, you know, those things, uh, how the society works uh, differently. Uh, yeah, I travel, so I my my setting changes. I would I would I would go back to saying my teenage daughter. You know, it was her first uh, Valentine's Day, and Ooh. she she saw stuff that she had never seen happening in a high school in India, and she came back completely angry and told Tripti that if this is what you have brought me to learn. This is the culture that you want me to learn from this country. So, you know, she was very angry. For the younger one, not so much. She picked up English very fast. So, I would say that was uh, from the social aspect. Musically, I, I would say I was able, I'm able to do stuff that I wanted to do more by living here. You know, other than, because otherwise, you know, anybody who wanted to do something with me had to fly me in from India. Now it's much easier. Oh, they want me in Philadelphia. No problem. Oh, they want me in Austin. So I'm able to do lots more. So Indian classical music, in a way, you know, I hope it doesn't sound arrogant, but I had reached a ceiling, you know, like I had played with every, very proud and very honored that I had played with every top musician possible. Every big festival that an Indian musician dreams of, I had played each one probably 20 times over. So, so it's not that I did, I wasn't enjoying playing it. It was not challenging me enough to make me worry. You know, I love to be not able to sleep at night because I, I want that fear of failure that I might fail tomorrow because I feel the day that fear is gone, uh, you, your life as a musician is over. 
I think that's the full stop. And that's also a prayer of mine that give me a comma, semicolon, whatever, God, God don't give me a full stop in my thinking. So, so I, I love Indian classical music, but I was playing with all, so I could still go and play. But when I'm playing with an orchestra who's reading everything, New York Philharmonic, the Boston Symphony, they are reading it, I'm not. I'm worried. You know, I'm playing with you guys. You know, Solange, your style of singing, Sami, I, till I heard him in Argentina, I didn't know, you know, I, I forgive me if it's wrong, the Armenian style of playing, you know, the, some of the songs mm -hmm. you played, it's like, it's mind-blowing. Eve, this handsome dude, Eve, you know, like, if he's even speaking in your language, you know, so like, for me, those are things that keep, keeps me excited and keeps me humble. It's like, wow, these guys are doing things that I will never be able to do. Can I do something that I can come close to them? So that fear, experimenting with musicians or writing for people who don't know my tradition or working with people is exciting for me. So I was able to do that. I'm able to do that. So I'm very happy about that, that I still go to sleep with that fear of failure, nervous before. I, I want that little bit of nervousness because comfort zone too much you're all you're you're, you're, you're dead so yeah that's that's kind of my experience and but i live in the east coast i probably because of music i have always met as i mentioned earlier awesome people they have all been helpful and these seven years have passed hopefully however long will also pass uh, happily great wow. so is, is that fear of failure why you like so much sorry is that fear of failure why you like golf so you, you know, uh, I hope the golf channel interviews me someday because to me, music and golf are absolutely the same. Nobody cares, Eve, how well you've played yesterday. It's always about tonight's concert. Golf is like that. Your last shot is the last shot. It's about the shot now. But at the same time, even if you played a bad concert yesterday, the sooner you forget the better you play tonight so absolutely i love golf because for me uh, it's 100% uh, a musician's life if musicians played golf we would beat any of these top players i'm not kidding uh, there we go yeah That's so top, top advice, advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah so i want to take a moment to apologize for people that we don't have the live chat i don't know why it's not working today uh, we'll, uh, we'll try, try to fix, fix it for next time, time but, but if you have any of our phone, phone numbers, numbers or through like admin at newdoctor.org, which is our email, you can like send something really quickly. And I actually have uh, one uh, that came through a text right now from California. And they're asking if Sandeep, you have a plan to give a virtual concert in the near future. So there is a plan for Tanglewood, the famous uh, venue in uh, New England. Uh, since they cannot do their concerts uh, live this year, as we all know the reason why, they have asked us to record uh, and send some stuff. So I'm in the process of recording with a very famous musician and I'm not supposed to give the name out yet. And another colleague of mine so yes the, that concert so it wouldn't be live live per se it will be recorded but uh, Tanglewood uh, will we'll premiere it. will premiere it uh, very soon so that is coming up and other than that there is stuff already that's been uh, live telecasted that they can all search and and, and see it of course facebook on facebook and, and instagram YouTube and youtube and yes Great. yes um, I know it would stay talking so much, but there are two things that I would love for you to talk about um, that we care about. It's uh, HUM, the humanitarian, um, and also your camp. Okay. <laughs> when will you talk about Argentina? I'm dying to talk about okay, your country. Okay, let's do it now and Close then it jump to that. <laughs> yes, yeah, I loved going to Argentina, man. I'm dying to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you take away from your experience there? You know, the first thing I would love to say is uh, living in India, it's Argentina, Brazil seems so far that it almost seems like another planet. Yet, it's amazing that we have always felt very connected. 
you know, the two of you and Eve, because he's so connected with that country, uh, I, I keep forgetting that he's not from there. You will be surprised yeah, to know. <laughs> uh, you know, you'll be accent is not a giveaway. <laughs> You know, you will be surprised to know that the entire India only supports, unfortunately also a rival country of yours, but the entire country supports only two countries whenever World Cup soccer is happening, either Argentina or Brazil. And only if these two teams are not doing well, then my country moves to some other Latin country, a Latin American country first. But even so, growing up in India, you know, we used to know the jersey numbers of Argentinian players, even reserve benches. So for me, Argentina means soccer. And I, I played soccer. I even captained my school team and then in soccer growing up and all that. So, you know, for me, it was a dream. And I, the closest to Latin America I had been was Trinidad and Tobago. So when Solange and you guys invited me, I was like, yes, yes. So very selfishly, I just wanted to go to the Mecca of soccer. So that's my first selfish reason. I love you guys. You, that's... Were, you were a Brazilian fan and then we turned you into an Argentinian? Or... No, 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 no. I, I love, listen, uh, I never saw Pele play. But I when I was growing up, I saw Maradona play. And man, I, I've been uh, like, for me, he was the God. And now my current God is Messi. So yeah. All right, good. So yeah, so, yeah. So Argentina, and I remember, I, I think it was Eve. I told him I will go only if you take me to a soccer game and something like that. So, so that was my first reason. Love for you all, of course. The, my biggest takeaway is that from the moment I stepped out of the plane into the airport, till I left, I actually didn't even feel that I was not in India, which for me is the biggest, biggest amazing factor, you know, like the love that I saw from your families, you know, Papa Mardinian, you know, Mommy Mardinian, your brother, your grandmom and her, you know, Scotch, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that and, and you know your grandpa, your extended family and Eve speaking in the local language, the food, the, the choco torta, oh my <laughs> god and, and, and what was that that we had at the soccer uh, chorizo? Chordipan. yeah, Chordipan, the, the food, uh, the, the, you know the people are relaxed and, and people are friendly and I, it, it felt there is less stress. Though I could see poverty, you travel to India, you will see poverty. And one of my closest friends who went to India the first time, he, the first thing he said, he said, Sandeep, people seem to be much happier. So I, I would say I saw love. You know what? I saw India. Hmm. What else can I away, say? You know, yes, away, I, I, you know. I just saw, I just saw a cousin or a brother you know so i i saw india mirrored in in argentina and the love i got from all of you and the work you know like the happiness of seeing the work you guys are doing with the you know the orchestra violeta i if excuse my pronunciation violeta para para in bengali my mother tongue means neighborhood so i don't know what it means there but you know like in, in, in my translation, it, will, uh, it, it would sound orchestra of the neighborhood, you know. So going there and seeing the young faces, but their teacher, the passion, the passion with which they were teaching and the passion with which you guys were, you know, sharing your experience. Going to that Armenian church, um, uh, the Sala Sala Siramush. Yeah, well, we had eight schools together from, that, from places so, around so, the neighborhood. Yeah. They were so loving, so caring. And then the um, food, you know, that, that pizza thingy, what is that called? Oh, Lana Jewel. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that and, and uh, I remember River Plate, of course. River Plate, the mecca of soccer, you know, mm -hmm. going there and those young kids. And I actually asked one of them to dribble a ball towards me thinking, oh, come on, this is a five-year-old kid. And with one jerk, he, he dribbled past me. And I was like, that's why Argentina is so much, you know, ranked higher in world soccer than India. <laughs> so, you know, seeing that and uh, the, at, the, at the main theater, you know, the 
Teatro del Libertador. I don't know how. Yeah, yeah. yeah all yeah. those soccer, rugby players. Oh no, it's it was it was incredible, and I I can just say that what you guys are doing uh, is is incredible, and it's no longer an option. You know, it's not even an option whether I want to do this or not, and that leads to hum. You know, like hum uh, is. Uh, Hum actually means we in my language. In Hindi, hum means we. So I call it the power of we. And the full form is harmony, universality through music. It was inspired by Yo-Yo Silk Road. We were walking uh, in Chicago for to a press conference and it hit me. What am I doing to carry something so beautiful that Yo-Yo has started? And I, very, I felt very selfish. It's 10 years now. I felt that, oh, you know what? I'm having a great time. But then I'll go back home and I do nothing about it. That was a wake up moment. I went back home and I decided that, okay, let me hit the rewind button. I played a concert for uh, specially abled kids in very early in my career without knowing that I'm going to play for them. So I had asked for a fee and they had said yes. It's only when I got up on stage and I pulled out my instrument two specially able kids came and gave me a flower bouquet that I realized that this concert was to raise funds for them. I refused the fee. I said, I cannot take money. And I wrote, I told myself that if I ever reach a position where I can do something, I will do it. So, you know, fast forward 10 years from now, when I went back to India, I was like, let me see if I can do something now. And maybe you would know that India has the largest number of visually impaired people. So me and my friends set out looking for talented young kids. And the first kid I met is now a 15-year-old kid and is playing. He was, you know, 10 years back. So he was 10 years old, super cute, or maybe he's 17 now. So he was a little kid playing a folk instrument in his school. He was playing so well that I, I took the instrument and I said, can I play something for you? And he said, yes. And I played something. Of course, he can't see me. He doesn't know who I am. And he looked towards the sound and he said, mm, you are not bad. <laughs> so <laughs> I fell in love and I looked at the principal and I said, this kid is mine. So it started with him. And now we have seven kids. Actually, we have nine, but seven that are c continuously learning from us, you know, vocal music. And Tabla, and as I said, this, this kid is playing. He's playing well, and God willing, he should be the first visually impaired superstar Tabla player of the world, you know. And so it started 10 years back, and uh, difficult, as you guys face it. You know, fundraising is very difficult in our countries. But always there is somebody up there who helps and supports us. I got a support from a German company called Lanxess, and they supported our scholarship. So we pay for their travel for their instruments and since they're visually impaired you know uh, we make sure that the girl students also have an escort from their home to the guru's home and of course you know a, a nominal fee to the gurus so we are very grateful to them for teaching them and and they are learning yeah it's still continuing yeah it's incredible yeah and That's the other point. thing was the camp right you i mentioned so in india we don't have the concept of camp to be honest, you know, like you go to your guru's home, you get your behind kicked and you learn that's your camp. That's your camp for 12 years. It's only after I moved here to the U.S. that, you know, my uh, some of my students started saying, uh, Guruji, do, uh, when will you do a camp? And uh, my first session was, why will I go camping with you guys? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest, I was like, camp? Why should I go in camping with you? So finally, a student of mine who teaches percussion himself, Matt Bronson, actually, he came to the first global musician workshop and started learning from me. And he's, he made me understand what a camp means in the U.S. And he was after my life. So I was like, OK, just to get, get, you know, get him off my back, I said, OK, if you want a camp, why don't you organize a camp? Little did I know that he was hell bent on doing it. So this, this is our, I think, fourth year. So we usually would rent a beautiful place in Vermont and stay there. So give them an ex, you know experience of living with a guru. So the four days we all stay together. There is no schedule. 
So like when I learned with my Guruji, there was no timetable. My lessons could be at 2 in the morning or no lessons for a month. So they stay with me. There is no schedules. They wake up practicing. They go to sleep practicing. I teach them. I throw challenges at them and I tell them, if you don't do this, you don't get lunch. So, you know, like we have fun. I have little kids that I call my little monkeys and I have, you know, retired CEOs of uh, orchestras who come to my camp. And uh, so either the fourth or the fifth year this year, I am super excited because this whole online thing. So, of course, I'll be doing my camp online. I think it's the third to the sixth of August. But I have invited two really, you know, there are superstars, but two really genuinely great human being musicians. They are maestros of their trade. And, you know, you three know me. If I am saying this, I mean it. So one of them is a, a violinist that I respect to the level of my own guru. Uh, his name is Dr. El Subramaniam. He's a fantastic, fantastic violinist, composer. He's an MBBS doctor, but on top of that, a great human being. So I really hope people come because they asked me, Dr. Subramaniam is so sweet. He said, Sandeep Ji, what do you want me to teach? And I said, you know, there is no curriculum. Whatever you will say will be invaluable for anyone who's there. So you say whatever you want to say. So he started laughing. Okay, we will see. Same thing. The other musician I have invited, she's like my older sister. We literally started our career together in 1990. I was introduced by a common friend, traveled by bus, traveled by train, traveled by, you know, like all sorts of modes of transportation. Fantastic singer, a female voice that will wake you from the dead. A female voice that will make you turn your head. You know, Solange, a voice like yours. Aww. That that <laughs> I'm not kidding. That demands attention. Well-read, amazing human being, supremely intelligent. So I have these two amazing gems. You know, like people in the U.S. or anywhere else, they they wouldn't get a chance to hear them talk for a, an hour and a half. So out of the four days. They will be on for, two, you know, one day each, an hour and a half. I can't ask them for more. And, uh, yeah, so I would love. And beyond that, of course, I will be teaching. And I have a sitar faculty, a fantastic young guy. His name is Rajiv Karmakar. Young guy who wanted to become an engineer. Destiny brought him to the U.S. to study engineering. He's ended up being a sitarist. His father was a sitarist. So he always played sitar. And he's playing sitar, but very tech savvy like you guys, and, but amazing musician. So I had invited him last year to be a faculty and everybody loved him so much that I'm, I've invited him back. So he will be talking about the raga and, you know, everything else and me, whatever little I can share. But these two top level musicians and so the three of you are most welcome as my guest to come join. And yeah. Yeah, I'll be on, I'll be honoured to have you there. Yes. Thank you. I'll be there. Anyone else? Yes. Yes. And then anyone uh, viewing this, uh, check or it out. Um, we'll put uh, in our social media links to the camp so you can check it out. But uh, yeah, we'll be there. Incredible work. <laughs> so before we finish this, we would stay talking so much more. <laughs> You know, can I can I say a quick thank you to one person that really also had an amazing impact on me, uh, my trip to Argentina beyond uh, Papa and Mommy and uh, I want to thank Beta Bond. You know, I uh, James Bond. I named her Beta Bond because she would appear in the most unexpected places solving problems. And so wherever you are, I love you and thank you for being so awesome. And so yeah, everyone knows, knows Betania is someone that has worked with us at the festival for the last six years. And she works on the logistics and much more to make sure that the festival happens smoothly. Oh, and one more thanks. Can I give one more thanks, please? Of course. You know, what I found very touching was that restaurant that opened, us, opened up for us to oh. rehearse. Please thank her. You know, that, that lady and that place... The ambience yeah. of that place, for me, that's India. 
that you know strangers will open their doors and say hey come on this is your house so i am please apologize that i uh, forgot her name but please thank her and her venue and of course there are so there were so many other people every guy that drove us everybody but that place that gave us that sweet spot to practice please thank her yeah that's uh like one of those things that happens one yeah. place got canceled and then that little venue came across and she opened her yeah. restaurant yeah. while she was close just yeah. for us to rehearse there i'll amazing. never forget that yeah so thank you um for joining us again if we can get lessons from today from sandeep our you're always a student you'll keep learning right even if you're at the level that you're at you're still humble so thank you for being who you are we and never go to bed relaxed right right <laughs> <laughs> always looking over your shoulder <laughs> <laughs> love you guys. Love you. Keep doing what you guys are doing. The world needs more people like you. Yeah. And that's oh. it. Like I oh. think, like you said, you all, said of us, all of us, we are responsible, are responsible to do some humanitarian, humanitarian or social, or social or educational, educational um, um, venture, venture with our lives. With our lives. It's, not it's not enough to enough just be a musician, musician anymore. anymore. Yeah. And, and um, um, we, we have, have the, the duty. duty. Uh, uh, to, actually to actually make an impact, make an impact if, possible, if possible, even if it's, even one, if it's person. one person. And, and um, uh, I think it's, I think important, it's important as, as a, person a person to do it, to do it and, hopefully and hopefully for the other, the other side, side, as well. side as well. But, it's, but it's, um, uh, it, changes it changes you as a human, and, human, and I think and we, we all can all agree on that, that, that when we give something from an honest place, it brings you something that you never would have experienced otherwise. So. Thank you, Thank Sandeep. Sandeep. Thanks for Thank being you. who you are. Thanks, Thanks for having joined us to our first new Dr. House call. You are the best guest luck. so no, good far. Luck. No, Love you. Love you. Love you. Come on, say I'm the best. Come on, say it. You are the best. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, well, Love you all. We're recording first before we say it. You know. We met and we were best friends from the beginning. No, so. Love you. Love yeah, you all. Thank you. Was. Love you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we and can't wait to see you in person whenever that will be. Yes. Let's do that. Yeah. yeah, and make some music together. Yes, yes. Always humbling and so great to be around you and learning from you. Well, same uh, here. Likewise, likewise. Love just, you guys. Just even through the screen, you're like making us better person. Just <laughs> listening to you. I, I wish my I, I, I wish my wife would say that. <laughs> <laughs> Quotes by Sandeep Das. I'll wake, I'll wake up every morning to that. <laughs> I love you, man. He's starting a podcast now. <laughs> you know, I, I wish I was the only half as handsome as you, Eve. My world would be all set. <laughs> oh, it sounds like your world's pretty set. <laughs> so thank you again. We're going to finish with the clip that you had, we put at the beginning just to have it. And then check out Sandeep's social media, the camp. We're Definitely going to be there. Um, his cause, um, and thank you. We're probably going to see another new Dr. House call in about two weeks. So sending you a kiss. Thank you. Thanks, all of you. And thank you again. Ciao, ciao. Until next time. Bye.